Rudolf Skatchel was born in the small town of Trutnov, Czechoslovakia in 1979. He began his professional footballing career for Hradec Kralove in the second tier of Czech football. He helped them to achieve promotion to the top flight in his debut season by winning the league. After playing just 21 matches in the Gambrinus League and scoring 6 goals, he had caught the attention of one of the big boys of Czech football. Slavia Prague were impressed by the quality of his set pieces, amongst other things, and splashed out 14 million Czech krona to take him to the capital. Playing as a left midfielder, he carried his Kralovy form into the end of the season, scoring 3 and assisting 2 in the remaining 12 matches as Slavia finished 5th. It was a season to remember in the Czech Cup though, as Slavia upset the odds and beat fierce City rival Sparta 2-1 in the final, which Skatchel started to lift the first silverware of his career. He capped a great season by helping the national youth team to win the European Under-21 Championships, beating Pirlo's Italy in the semis and France in the finals on penalties. The following year, in his first full campaign with Slavia, they were locked neck and neck in a white knuckle race to the title with Sparta, with Skatchel being a key figure, scoring 8 goals and providing 4 assists. He was comfortable and tidy on the ball, quick and agile and could whip enticing crosses or fire dangerous corners into the box. The term wand of a left foot was pretty much made to describe this guy and he could strike the ball oh so sweetly with his left peg. The title race went down to the wire and despite Sparta dropping points in their last 2 matches while Slavia went unbeaten in 7, Skatchel and his team missed out by a single point. Nonetheless, his consistency domestically and in the UEFA Cup had put him on the radar of Marseille manager Alain Perrin who forked out 2.5 million euros in August 2003 to bring him to the French Giants. He was not exactly a first team regular as he made only 20 league appearances. On top of that, he was frequently played at left back rather than his preferred left midfield position as he fell in when first choice Johnny Ecker was unavailable. Skatchel wasn't a bad fullback by any means as he was certainly no slouch, relished the physical battle and loved a tackle. While he was competent in that defensive position, he was much more effective further up in an attacking role which best utilised his strengths. After Perrin was sacked in January 04 and replaced by Jose Angio, Skatchel fell out of favour and in the summer he was sent on loan to Panathinaikos in Greece. He featured only 16 times for them in the league, but started all but one of their Champions League group stage matches. At the age of 25, it was Skatchel's first time playing in the competition. After Panathinaikos decided against taking up their option to buy him, Rudy returned to Marseille where his prospects for first team football looked bleak. Salvation was to come from an unlikely source. Russian-Lithuanian businessman Vladimir Romanov had taken control of Hearts in February 2005 and had great ambitions to shake up Scottish football and appointed highly rated Scottish manager George Burley in June. The next job was to improve the playing squad and on 19th of July 2005, despite major interest from clubs like Celtic, they announced the loan signing of Rudolf Skatchel with an option to buy. Burley was delighted, saying, Rudolf is an outstanding player and it is no secret that we've had to beat off some stiff competition. He's a versatile and strong lad with a good left foot. He's in his prime and he wants to play for us. Skatchel would later explain how it transpired that he joined a club that he had never even heard of. I had some offers in the summer to return home and Celtic were interested in me too, which was a possibility as I wanted to play in the Champions League. Then Hearts contacted me, but I thought it was too small a club. However, George Burley and his assistant Simon Hunt called me and my agent five times a day and I saw they really wanted me for their plans. I began to pick up some information about the club and saw they wanted to attack the position Celtic and Rangers have traditionally held in the Scottish game. Skatchel's Hearts career got off to a brilliant start as he displayed a poacher's instinct to be in the right place at the right time and prod home the opener in the eventual 4-2 victory over Kilmarnock. It's perfect for me, perfect start, first game, first goal, amazing, amazing start. Match day two was a belter as it was the Edinburgh derby at Tynecastle, his home day Rudy showed tenacity, determination and a willingness to fight for everything as he was the man to see the ball over the line and open the floodgates of what would be a 4-0 trouncing of their bitter city rivals. There is no better way to instantly endear yourself to the fans of a new club than to score in a derby. Gorgi had a new hero. I play first, first game home, yes, I remember this game. It's, it's perfect. They continued their remarkable start to the season with a 3 0 win paradise, and Rudy was again on the score sheet, stroking compatriot Roman Bednar's cutback into the roof of the net to round off the scoring. Hearts were the talk of the town, and the question on everyone's lips was could they keep this up? With a 100% record, Hearts find themselves the target team. All playing well inside, Jankowski almost gets it through. This must be a chance, it's a goal! 
Scaccio comes in again. That opening goal by Rudy Scaccio, Hodge 2, Aberdeen 0. This Hearts team is built for the marathon. They're going to hang in and stay there. Some 15,500 making up the largest Hearts support at Tynecastle for a decade. It looked all so easy as Hearts carved their way through the Motherwell midfield and defence. Scatchel pointing the way. Five games in, it's 10 out of 10 for Hearts. Close your eyes and make a wish. It's time to believe. Andy, in successive weeks, the lead has gone from two points to three points to five points. They're pulling away. Just holding it up there for Scatchel. Goes wide here for Bednar. A good ball in, that's Hartley. Must be a goal! And it's Rudy Scatchel again! Hearts won comprehensively. You, know, you can't ask any more of the players. You know, 6 out of 6, going four goals away from home today. Um, tremendous. Some said Hearts would come off the rails at Inverness, but Rudy kept up his goal a game SPL record to maintain the momentum. There's a shot. The expectation is much greater now because the 100% record is there to get broken. So the longer we go, the more nervous I think the fans are getting. So, unbelievably, Hearts had a 100% record after seven games and were sitting pretty at the top of the table, five points ahead of Celtic. Scatchel had equaled Mark Viduka's record for Celtic and became just the second player to score in seven consecutive SPL matches. A wind of change was threatening to blow through Scottish football when Hearts faced their biggest test of the season on 20. 4th of September when Rangers visited the capital. Roman Bednar caused Bedlam by heading home Paul Hartley's corner in the 15th minute. In a scrappy game, Scatchel created most of the best chances for his team, giving Jankowskis and Bednar guilt-edged chances to double the lead. The game finished 1-0 and while Scatchel's scoring streak was broken, Hearts' 100% record wasn't. And to win eight games in Detroit in any league is a magnificent achievement. Two draws in the following two games against Falkirk and Celtic respectively put an end to the un interrupted winning, but Hearts were still unbeaten and three points ahead atop the table, and the fans really believed that their team could be the first non-old firm name on the SPL trophy since 1985. But an unbelievable turn of events would change everything. Part of Midlothian uh, Football Club are today announcing uh, that after discussions between the board uh, and George Burley, it has been mutually agreed that because of irreconcilable differences, George Burley will not continue as manager with immediate effect. Coach John McGlynn took control for the match in which Scatchel scored and they won 2-0, but the manager, who had got them playing the most attractive football in the country and looked set to mastermind an astonishing league victory, was gone and the fallout was incredible. He's a first-class coach, very much a player's manager, as I've said, very popular with the players. The training sessions he put on were second to none and uh, we're bitterly disappointed that, that he's to move on. Chief Executive Phil Anderton was sacked, Chairman George Fawkes resigned in protest and Vladimir's son Roman was appointed as his replacement. On the 7th of November, English manager Graham Ricks, fresh off some less than stellar spells in charge of Portsmouth and Oxford, was appointed Burley's permanent replacement. They've got a, an owner who's very rich and, <laughs> and very ambitious, so the ingredients there to to make us a real force in Scottish it's football. Surprised about the, the appointment itself. I don't think he's any particularly great track record as a manager, certainly not. Those the head coach he's been appointed as. The chaos behind the scenes naturally affected performances, and they suffered their first loss of the season to Hibs on 29th of October. Despite the patchy results, Scatchel kept on playing out of his skin and scoring at an incredible rate, adding a further seven goals with seven consecutive start of season strikes before their first of January match with Celtic, a pivotal fixture in the title race as Celtic had pulled four points ahead by that point. It was a scintillating encounter in which Celtic found themselves 2-0 down after only 10 minutes. Celtic mounted an incredible second half comeback, sealed by a last minute Stephen McManus winner as the boys stretched their lead at the summit of the table to 7 points. Romanov brought no fewer than 11 new players to the club in the January window as Scatchel's goals dried up, scoring just twice in the league in 2006, albeit one of those was against Hibs a match they won 4-1 with Scatchel assisting the other three goals. Scatchel just rushing 
The man aside there, Whitaker, still Skatchel going in. It also incredibly came out that Romanov was not only responsible for choosing the players to buy, but was taking it upon himself to select the starting 11 as well. Uh, quite frankly, the Hearts supporters starved of success in the past would let the Edinburgh Town Council pick the team if they could get away with it <laughs> and get success. Who's calling the shots here and can two people call the shots? Well, I think Mad Vlad is calling the shots. Rex was sacked on 22nd of March and Celtic wrapped up the SBL title on the 5th of April with a 1-0 win over Hearts at Celtic Park. In the end, Hearts finished second and although there was great jubilation that they had managed to split the old firm and secure a spot in the Champions League qualifiers, it is impossible to shake the feeling of what if from a season which had started with the promise of immortality. What if Romanov had just left George Burley to it? Hearts' fortunes in the Scotland the Scottish Cup were a different story. They had seen off Kilmarnock, Aberdeen and Partick Thistle to set up a mouth-watering semi-final with Hibs. A sublime Paul Hartley hat-trick helped Hearts to a 4-0 win and sent them to the finals where they would face the fairy tale story of that year's competition, 2nd Division Gretna. Scatchell opened the scoring from close range on the 40th minute. Ryan McGuffey equalised with 15 minutes left to play. In extra time, Scatchell hit the post and was denied a clear penalty for a foul as the two teams could not be separated. Scatchell, along with Presley, Nielsen and Pospisil dispatched his spot kick as they beat Plucky Gretna 4-2 on penalties to lift the Scottish Cup for the seventh time in their history. Scatchell's time at the club ended in confusion. On the 2nd of May, the board have made this announcement regarding the Marseille loanee. The club has an agreement in place with Rudy Scatchell, which was signed last summer. Hearts of Marseille agreed terms before Rudy joined, which has resulted in the club exercising their right to retain him for a further two years. However, on the 14th of May, a day Day after the Scottish Cup final, Scatchell looked downbeat as the team paraded the trophy in front of the fans at Tynecastle. It seemed he was saying his final goodbye as he told BBC Scotland, This is very difficult for me to say goodbye. I must leave, but I don't want to talk about this today. I'm unhappy with some things, but the supporters are fantastic and I have to say thank you. Scatchell had endeared himself to the fans and become a hero with not only his remarkable goal scoring, but his shithousing celebrations and great knack for winding up the opposition, especially Hibs. In Indeed, he wouldn't be winning any popularity contests with the managers, players and fans of rival teams. He was dogged by accusations of diving and was alleged by Celtic captain Neil Lennon to have spat at him, a claim which was wholeheartedly refuted by Hart and Rudy. As a club spokesman said, there doesn't appear to be any proof of these allegations on television pictures. As for Rudy himself, he's very angry and strenuously denies that he spat at Neil Lennon. Rudy finds the comments attributed to Lennon extremely offensive. It was the second time he had been accused of spitting at an opponent that season, with Stuart Duff of Dundee United also saying Scatchell had done so. Rudy finished the season as Hearts' top scorer with 17 in all competitions and was nominated for a PFA Players Player of the Year award but he lost out to the brilliant Sean Maloney. After a long, drawn out pursuit, Rudy was reunited with George Burley at Southampton in the English Championship, joining the Saints in a £1.6 million deal. Burley promised the fans that he was bringing in someone who loves to get forward, has lots of energy and is an exciting player to watch. Unfortunately, those who were hoping for the prolific Scatchel who was scoring for fun in Scotland would have been rather disappointed as he scored just three times in 37 appearances. He was something of a creative force for the Saints though, laying on nine assists for his teammates as Southampton finished sixth. I'm sure detractors and skeptics will use Scatchel's meagre goals tally in the second tier of English football compared to at Hearts as yet another piece of evidence that the top flight of Scottish football is a similar level of quality to the English League One. Scatchel himself pointed to not always getting to play in his preferred position like at Hearts, being used in a more rigid system, as well as once again at left back occasionally. This is where Scatchel started the second leg of the playoff semi-finals against Derby, which they would lose on penalties. After playing 16 league games the next season, Scatchel asked to go out on loan for the latter half of the campaign in a bid to be called up to the national team, who apparently did not look favourably on players not plying their trade in the top flight. He joined Hertha Berlin, and despite playing well and impressing, they couldn't afford his transfer fee. His plan worked as he was included in the national team squad for Euro 2008. He never made it off the bench as the Czech Republic crashed and burned, failing to progress from their group. Returning to Southampton for the 08-09 campaign, he played 28 league matches, pretty much all at left back and was unable to save the team from relegation to League One. He was released from his contract in May 2009. I'm sure he will be remembered as a hard-working yet unspectacular player by Saints fans, someone who did not quite live up to the fanfare and hype surrounding his arrival, if they remember 
remember him at all. He went back to Slavia, six years after leaving, played five matches, bagging himself a hat-trick in his final game against Bernal. He then moved on a free to Greek Super League club Larissa, played seven matches, didn't score, and then, after a couple years in the wilderness, the prodigal son returned home. Yeah, nice, like, it uh, looked like nothing really changed. So, yeah, I feel very welcome and uh, feel very good because, how I said, Nothing really changed, look, looks like. On the 16th of September 2010, Hearts announced the signing of a 31 year old Rudy Scatchel on a one year contract with an option to extend. A delighted Rudy outlined his intentions and cleared up the confusion surrounding his departure in a statement. I was very successful at Hearts, but I was young and at the time I trusted various people telling me it was the right time for me to go, but I was wrong. Now I want to put the past behind me and I am very happy that the club gave me another chance to show my best and restore my career. I'm restore it, he did. He scored on his second home debut, a 2-1 loss to Rangers. Three weeks later and he netted his first ever hat-trick for Hearts, comprised of three absolute corkers, as he bagged every goal against St Mirren. He was back in the place that he loved and where he felt loved, and consequently back amongst the goals, just as in his first spell he ended the season as top scorer with 13. Highlights included a brace in the 5-0 drubbing of Aberdeen and a dramatic 93rd winner against St Mirren, his second of that game. Although possibly one of the best moments for Scatchel that season didn't involve a goal at all, instead it was a moment of revenge and another golden opportunity to shithouse. Hib striker Derek Riordan had been in the news for all the wrong reasons during Scatchel's first spell with Hearts, after being caught joining in with an infamous fan chant which branded Scatchel an effing refugee to the tune of Yellow Submarine. A fucking refugee. Five years on from that incident and Scatchel and Riordan would take centre stage in an ill-tempered and fiery Edinburgh derby at Easter Road. As the game drew to a close, Hearts were 2-0 up and coasting when Riordan, who was skippering his side that day, went in on his nemesis Scatchel with a wild stud showing lunge. He saw red not long later when Scatchel was waiting to return to the pitch following treatment. He was bombarded with all manner of missiles, coins, lighters, you name it. Ever the troll, Rudy turned to the Hibs fans and flashed them a gesture, a perfect one for the moment, as he put the L sign to his forehead. You're losers, he was saying. A month after the derby, and Scatchel added insult to injury in an interview with the Scotsman, as he looked to make Riordan and his singing look rather daft. I think this is something silly, because probably he's never been in school. He doesn't seem to know where is Czech Republic. My parents are teachers. To help his education, maybe they can make some lessons for him. They're geography teachers, by the way. Hib sent me a letter saying sorry, but he never said anything to me afterwards, nor in the last derby when you saw what he did. Maybe some people like to think that was refugees versus Scots, but who won? The following year, Scatchel had himself another barnstorming campaign. Unlike previous years, however, he got off to a slow start, and injury sustained in pre-season meant that he was slowly introduced as a substitute or on the bench for the first couple of months as he regained fitness. It wasn't until match day 10 that he made his first league start against Celtic at Tynecastle. He scored the opener, a trademark homing missile with that mythical left foot as Hearts went on to win 2-0. That season, Hearts, who were some £30 million in debt, were plagued by a long-running saga over late and failed payments of players' wages. And this chaos and uncertainty behind the scenes led to poor results on the pitch, as Hearts could only muster a disappointing 5th place finish. Rudy, once again, was his team's top scorer in the league, with 12 this time, and just like the season prior, this tally included a hat-trick against St Mirren and a brace against Aberdeen. As in 2006, Hearts put league disappointments behind them to mount an assault on the Scottish Cup, but unlike in his debut season, Scatchel carried his scoring into the Cup and was absolutely on fire. Rudy found his shooting boots in the quarterfinals against St Mirren, giving Hearts the lead just after halftime before Azaliuska's own goal set up a replay. Hearts made much lighter work of the buddies at the second time of asking, and Scatchel added a second to calm the nerves four minutes from time. The semi-final was a dramatic match against league winner Celtic. Hearts had to withstand heavy pressure in the first 45, but somehow managed to make it to half-time with the scores level. Two minutes after the restart, Scatchel was fed by substitute Craig Beatty, rounded Forrester and blasted into the roof of the net to open the scoring. Rudy was in his groove and forced the Celtic keeper into a save after a venomous shot with that famous left. In the 86th minute, Gary Hooper headed a very offside looking equaliser and extra time seemed to be on the cards. There was to be some justice for the Jambos though, as they got a rather soft handball penalty in injury time. Craig Beatty dispatched it to set up an historic climax with 
Hibs. It was to be the first Edinburgh Derby final since 1896, and I struggle to remember having witnessed a more one-sided final than that one. Hearts humped, humiliated, shellacked, a sorry Hibs 5-1 and King Rudy backed himself a brace as he won the Scottish Cup with the Jambos for a second time. This was a fact that put him in the history books, but during the parade, he predictably had his priorities straight. You're the first Hearts player in over 100 years to win two medals. That's another. They beat the Hibs last, last night, so... That was his last game for Hearts, but as Rudy said, it's the best way to say goodbye, with the cup in my hands. In October 2012, Rudy was back training with the club, but at that point the SBL were sick of the long-running player wages debacle and had imposed a transfer embargo on the Jambos. At the end of the month, he joined Dundee United on a six-month deal. Top-notch wind-up merchant that he is, and always looking for ways to stick it to the high bees, Rudy requested that the number 51 would adorn his back, in a very obvious reference to the 5-1 cup final victory. Unsurprisingly, this caused a bit of an uproar, just, I imagine, as Scadrill wanted it to. That was the most interesting thing that happened during his short spell there, as he was used predominantly as an impact sub. He left in January 2013 and in March he rejoined Slavia Prague again, returning for a third spell, making five appearances at the end of the season. In January 2014, Rudy was back training with Hearts and wanted to return to help his former side, who were crisis hit and in administration. They were under a one-in-one-out transfer embargo and they tried to replace 39-year-old goalkeeping coach Alan Coombs with a 34-year-old Skatchel. The SPFL did not see this as a fair swap and blocked the transfer. A furious Rudy hit out. I wanted to sign for hearts and helped the club. It wasn't about a big contract or money, I was going to play for free, but I was stopped from doing that and no one has given me a good explanation why that is. Disappointed and demotivated, Rudy considered retirement and in truth he virtually was retired for a while as he was without a club for two seasons before playing five matches for Mlada Boleslav in his homeland during the 15-16 campaign. On 21st of January 2016 at the age of 37, Skatchel made a shock return to Scottish football, joining championship side Rafe Rovers. He made 28 appearances for them, mainly off the bench, providing 3 assists. His time there, yet again, will probably be remembered for another bit of high bees trolling, while he was being subbed off on the 75th minute of a Christmas Eve 1-1 draw with the Edinburgh Giants at Easter Road, he flashed a 5-1 sign, sparking fury. Skatchel explained to the Sun, I'm shocked that such a big deal was made about what I did. No one cares how they treated me out there, they called me a refugee and other names, children were saying it to me, and even old ladies, it is embarrassing for all of Hibs' community in my opinion. How would you react if people called you a refugee? I do a gesture and they react by criticising me and saying I should be banned from football. That is so funny. I waved to our supporters and I showed them 5-1. I was just showing them that they can't change history. Following his release from Rafe in the summer of 2017, he returned to the Czech Republic with second tier side FK Pribram, the 12th club he had played for, and enjoyed something of a career renaissance in his twilight years, scoring four league goals, helping them game promotion. He played 16 times for them the following season to aid them in their successful bid to avoid relegation. He retired from football on the 2nd of June 2019. Rudy Scatchel is not only a Hearts legend and one of their greatest ever players, he is a true legend of Scottish football. As a foreign player coming to the league, he just seemed to get it straight away. He got the rivalries, he got the fans, he got the style of football, he got the passion and the emotions. He's one of the biggest wind-up merchants we've seen in the Scottish game in recent years and he was always able to back it up with fantastic performances on the pitch. Oh, and of course, that wand of a left foot will surely go down in history. <laughs>